Welcome everybody. Um, I'm Marcus Fischer. I'm from the Solothurn Spital RAG, which is a company uh, with about four hospitals nowadays. Uh, when I took over um, the, the position of head of library, uh, it was even six hospitals. So the first challenge I met there is how shall we manage ELL interlibrary loan, which is for a non-university institution like a hospital uh, a, a big issue because we don't have so many licenses like an university, we are really dependent on ELL. So we have uh, at the time then one institution, the Solothurn Spital RAG, which consisted of several hospitals and even worse, we had at this time three different library locations. So this is kind of a nightmare because um, now you have to manage not only over several hospitals, several locations, but um, between different staffs located at different uh, sites. So I did um, look out if I could find a good uh, management system for uh, interlibrary loan, and I didn't find uh, one which uh, was satisfactory for, for us. So we de decided to, um, to design, to develop um, a tool, Dr. Doc, we called it, um, exactly for doing this job. We started development in um, 2005. We did this on a private basis because a hospital like Solothurn Spital RAG could not invest, uh, could not hire developers to do that. So we were kind of uh, very um, interested and engaged just doing that. We started in 2005 and um, we had quite a success because um, very soon a lot of institutions, especially from Germany, began um, to show interest in this tool and using this tool. So um, we got in, in, a in a difficult position because it's on a private basis, uh, so we have control of, of the code on, on this time really uh, on the private in, uh, with us. So we decided in two, 2010 to release the whole application uh, under GNU General Public License, speaking it became open source. And it is still. <laughs> um, so actually now, um, since 2010, you can download the application if you want. Um, there are some minimal require requirements you have to fulfill. And this is normally something which you would delegate to your IT department. It's not something that you do on your desktop computer. Because um, the application is built around uh, Java, and you need um, a server container like Tomcat, at least Tomcat 6. You need a, a, dat a database server running. Uh, the application uses uh, MySQL. So normally you would delegate this to do uh, your IT department. I will give you a short um, overview of what you have to do if you want to build and install this by your own. It's not complicated actually, uh, but still after you have set up Java, after you have set up Tomcat and MySQL, um, you have to create a database. There's a dump in, in, in the source code. You can create a database. You have to tell Tomcat that it should run on UTF-8 encoding, and you have to define the port numbers, which normally would be 80. Um, then you have to edit this file here. In there um, are all um, system configurations. Everything is annotated, is commented, so you can easily choose um, what is right for your situation. And then you would have to build a so-called uh, WAR file and drop that WAR file into the web apps folder of Tomcat. So actually it's not complicated to do, but um, probably you give this to this ID department. If you don't want to do this job by yourself, um, sorry, there's uh, also support if you have problems. Like in every open source project, you have mailing lists. Uh, we are very happy with mailing lists, a very old style kind of communication, but very effective. So there is quite an active list on Dr. Doc General. On Dr. Doc General, there are also uh, not only technical people, but uh, actually users who use Dr. Doc in their daily business. 
and they will ask questions about what, uh, how can we find a solution for this and that, etc. So this is the general list, and then there is a very silent um, Dr. Doc tech list. So if you would um, were interested to become a developer, uh, you would join the second list. I recommend the first one. So. If you want to avoid all the pain of installation, there is a ready-to-use uh, inst installed version at drdoc.com. Um, actually, since it's, it's run since 2005, 2006, and it's been a free service since then, which may not uh, remain always like this. So we have. Um, about, at the moment, 100 lib libraries in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland, which are using it, amongst uh, really big libraries, university libraries in, in Germany. And we even had um, libraries who invested into DocDoc because they would have liked to see a feature which at a given time was not yet implemented. So there's really an interest in this tool and it's being strongly used. For me, very interesting to see that the usage didn't, I mean, we are Switzerland based, but the tool really hit from Germany into Switzerland. That was kind of interesting to see me that the application took um, was first accepted uh, more in Germany than it was in Switzerland, speaking of the German part. Um, and nowadays, even in Austria, some libraries use it. So, what's all about it? Now, I will switch forth and back a little bit from this presentation to the, to the application and show, try to show you what Dr. Doc can do for you. So, I think the first thing uh, you want, uh, what I did want uh, back then, was I did want an order form for my customers, for my patrons, uh, where they can place an order. They need an article, um, they don't have access to it, uh, they want to send it to your library, so you need a cu customizable order form. Typically, this is IP based maybe link-based, a special link, uh, which then would not be IP-based, and you would see this order form. How would this look like? So I go to Dr. Doc. Um, I show you. Here we are not in the IP range, which is registered, so I switch to a special URL to show you my, yeah. So here we are. This is an order form from Dr. Doc. Looks a little bit scary because it's long, <laughs> but it's very handy. Um, minimal minimal um, subset you need to have is uh, first name, second name, and then email. So this one here you don't have to have. This is already customized specially for my library. But this, these three fields are standard. And you can have as many address fields or option fields or put comments into it as, as, you, as you want. You will take a look at it. So this is at the address section. Um, here um, we have predefined categories. In our case, um, different uh, sections of our institution. And then here, if the customer, this is a lot of work to do for him, if he really wants to go this way, there, there will be easier ways. He can fill in all the references of an article by hand here. I'll show you easier way. So, um, yeah, then back down here already, uh, Mac, computer, everything is vice versa. Good. Um, here we have customized for us. This is not standard. Normally you would not see these, these, two, these two comments here. We have to, um, the customer has to accept fees, which may apply in my library if he wants to, to, to send an, uh, um, a request at my library. And then he sends the request. Next time he comes back uh, with, uh, to this, this form, his uh, first name, second name, and email will already be <coughs> filled in. So the system will send, set a, a cookie in the background and keep in mind this is uh, 
this and this person, as long as the browser is open. When the, the customer closes the browser, this, the cookie expires, it's gone, and uh, then it starts again. A little bit as helper, you can here fill in a PMID. I come from hospital world, so PMID, PubMed ID, is a very common identifier. If you fill in this PMID, you will have here um, filled in the references of the article magically by itself. So this is the order form. As you can see now, because we have um, specific um, information about the article, up, up, up here you see links to, to Google or Google Scholar. So if you click there, it will search for this article, which is not very good work because um, this article is in Spanish, uh, translated in English from PubMed. So if it would be an English article, it would work better. But this is uh, helpful because uh, very often customers' patterns do um, order articles at our institution, which actually they would find in the internet or would be licensed. So to show you how this order form can be um, customized, there's really um, plenty of possibilities to do that. I do login. Uh, Mac, 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 yes, here. I've got a long address here. <laughs> Hope I did it right. Yes, I did. So this you normally would not see. We do manage several accounts. We have um, a nursing school, which is uh, based at GS. We have the hospitals. We even manage other hospitals. This is not uh, every customers we have. There are about uh, 100 of them. But I am responsible for, um, for, for customers very specially. So I have a, a select where I can choose an account. Normally, you don't have this. You have one account and get logged in directly. So, um, don't mind, we come back here later just to show you how you can customize um, the order forms. I go to account, um, and I have got here these order forms. It looks very scary, but it isn't. Um, then you can have, for each method of access, now this is IP-based, you can have an order form if, if the customer is allowed to log in into this tool, which is not the idea, actually. Um, you can have this special ID, which I have used before, could be another order form. So I could manage for my account here already four or different order forms. I take now the, um, <coughs> the one we had before. So here you can really just by clicking activate and deactivate um, options. Um, I, I'll go a little bit down to show you more. For example, um, yeah, you can um, define different uh, options. We had that the customer has the option to, to order a document as per email or as paper copy. You can fill in, in your own values and Name it as you like. Um, there could be, if you're interested, uh, to have a priori priority field. So we just click it on or click it off. It will appear. It will disappear. So you can say, yeah, I'm a very urgent uh, order. Um, yeah. You can add a comment, free comment, as you like. Then here you have all these address fields you can add. It's a free field, institution, department, categories which you can define. You can define your own categories. We have seen my categories before. And you can even say, not only add these fields, but you can say these fields are then required. <coughs> so the customer has to fill in some value. So this doesn't end. I don't, I don't think you will find a combination or a need that you can't cover here. Just by clicking, entering the values you need. It looks scary. It isn't. <laughs> Very easy to handle. Very powerful. Something I have not seen in any um, system like that. Okay. Let's go back to the presentation. 
these are the order forms, then very handy you can use the tool as a link resolver. Link resolver means you can um, add, for example, in PubMed or in any database that you license, you can make a link directly to Dr. Doc or to any link resolver. Dr. Doc is a link resolver. So it is so called open URL compliant, which means that a reference, an article you find in PubMed will then be transferred to Dr. Doc and all, uh, all article details will be present in Dr. Doc. I'll show you that. So I try to go back again, yeah, and log out to show you that. Um, I do a little bit hacking here. Don't. So this would be the base URL, open URL do, which you have to add into the database, and then I take just a PMID. Um, So, uh, yeah, of course, it's not IP based here, so I have to add again my special URL. Yeah. So, coming from, uh, fr from, from PubMed, this would be the link resolver you will get. Um, it will show you if your institution has got um, um, a license. In this case, we do have in this old donor hospital um, an, an online license for fortunately the neurology and psychiatry. Very good because if you move the mouse onto this link, you will see that this link is on article level. So if I click here, I sh would be um, redirected to the article on article level. It will probably not work here, except if the APFL would have licensed for treated neuro neurology psychiatry as well. Um, yeah. It can even show you um, your own print holdings. I take another example. Hope I did it right. So this should get a New England Journal of Medicine. So now you have three options. You, you will see that it is licensed online. It will be again on article level, I suppose. Yeah, article level. Then as often, all volumes of a journal are freely available. This will sh show up also. And in this case, we have it in our own library in the print holdings. We have uh, this section here in the, in the print holding in our archive, uh, the shelf number 13. Yeah. If the customer um, is not able to get to the full text, of course, it goes one step further, proceeds here, and everything is pre-filled. Normally, in the second order, this is also pre-filled to the library, and we deal with it. You just ask any questions if, you, if something arises. Again, you can see there are also links now to Google. So this may help again. OK. So this is the link resolver. This link resolver works best if you are a member of the German EZB. EZB is the Elektronische Zeitschriftenbibliothek in Regensburg. Um, it will work if you're not a member at the EZB um, for all free available titles, but if you want to indicate your licensed titles, then you should, get, uh, you should become a member of the EZB. Um, this is a very good thing because the EZB is a cooperative uh, work um, of hundreds and hundreds of libraries in, in around the world. And it's very easy to, to, um, to indicate your own online holdings in there. So it actually just make a, a mark. We have got this journal if you want from the year X to now or, yeah. And um, the good thing about the ATP is they have a freely available API, which then can be used to make these indications you have seen before. Link resolvers are quite expensive if you go for a commercial um, vendor. 
So ATP is a, re a really great way to do that. You can still use Dr. Talk, Dr. Talk without ATP. You will see all green, all free available titles. You can import your own holdings. We will see that also, but it's uh, recommended to use ATP. Okay. So, what I also, what, what I had problem with, I, my staff did order articles which actually could be found freely in the internet. And I didn't like it, because it costs uh, around eight Swiss francs. Uh, and if you order it from Subito in Germany, it will be even more expensive. So I thought it would be a good idea to have um, int integrated into this tool, Dr. Talk, a kind of a search for, for in the internet. So we did that too. Um, I have to log in again. If I say login, it's normally meant this is the view of the librarian. Hope I got it right. Again, my selection here. So I, uh, yeah, this is because we come from the link resolver. We don't want that. So this is the first field you will see if you log in normally. So this is a search, free search in the internet. Um, I have written down an article which I hope we will find. Regulation of bone. You have to write this really correct. Not like <coughs> this. Regulation of bone formation by applied dynamic. Any typos? Oh, good. <laughs> so I took, uh, so I press on search, and as you can see, it will search the internet. We can explain what we use here, and on top of it, you find your regulation of bone formation by applied dynamic loads. Look at the URL public.lsu.edu. Probably a university in 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 the US, in USA, America, which has a copy of this article freely in the internet. So I click on it, and with a little luck, it should load the PDF, which it does. So ELL order fulfilled. <laughs> um, what do we use in the background? We had uh, an integrated Google search, which is uh, not quite um, a good idea to do because uh, the terms and conditions of Google do not allow these kind of things. Um, so we now use um, Seek Server, it's uh, also an op open source project, <coughs> and they provide an, an API which we can machin machinally uh, re send requests and get responses and put them into here. So we delegated this web search to the SIGS project and used their API and put it in here. What's the URL of the SIGS project? Seek, uh, um, I think it's even noted here. Yeah, here. Here is the URL. Actually, we should run our own SIGS server to have a very um, reliable response. Sometimes you will have timeouts here, and which then will result into nothing. So it would be a good idea to run our own um, SIG server. But as I said at the beginning, this is a private project. We are not funded by Solothurn hospitals, uh, by anything. So we are limited at the moment. So if you didn't find it in the internet, you go and proceed, and you will again, uh, and the next step already on the, <laughs> on the presentation. Also something which did um, bother me a lot is that you have often only an article title. Your users will send you a copy of, uh, of the reference of the articles. They, they, they take their pencil and say, this I want. So, very nice work for the librarians. You have to find all the detailed ESN numbers, uh, pages, and so forth. So actually, we do, as you have already seen, an autocomplete upon the title, which um, results in this. We just entered here regulation of bone formation by applied dynamic loads. And already here, we have got all our article references. 
This is done by um, open coins, op using open URL coins. Very, very many databases around the world um, use hidden information in their, in their databases which can be used um, to get this kind of information. This is the same principle as Sotero uh, does. So this comes in very handy if you're not, um, maybe you, you would have an, an auto-completion which is not correct, so you could correct it up here, another journal, or you can intervene here by hand, which you will not do. Okay. Um, if you are, if this is okay, you go next to, sh to show you the availability. Again, as we know, this journal is licensed, so actually I took it from my online holding and sent it to my own patron. Just to get it straight, Dr. Doc is not an, an ELL system which provides articles like Subito. This is a management system for your own ELL orders for your own customers. Hmm? There's nothing to... I, I, there's not a, a, a functionality in here like uh, ordering anywhere and I'll give you mine. This is institutional only and properly within your licenses. So if this would not be licensed by my library, I would have to search the traditional catalogs. Where can I get now this article, which maybe is not available at our institution? So I have many, many, many uh, links here. And in two sections, these are the ones you probably will know. Uh, so in Switzerland, we have got a link to Swissbeep, the presentation before. It now works. Um, I had to reverse engineer their API, but now it sends the ESSN numbers to Swissbeep, and then you can see wherever, uh, which university maybe has this article. Um, there are interfaces which are more convenient, for example, in the University Bern, uh, it's very handy, they don't have it, but um, it would be indicated here if Bern does have it. Then they have a very good ordering system in Bern, you just could um, click here and it would uh, fill in all the details for ordering at the University of Bern. Uh, we now know they don't have it. Maybe Zurich would have it, so you would first check here with the MBZ Zurich, or in the, if, you, if you have found it, you just click here. It will pre-fill all values for the order form for the University of Zurich. So that's very handy. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. Then. Also very interesting because I know my colleagues uh, in, in the general part of Switzerland, like Erste Bibliothek, Triemli Bibliothek, etc. They may have print holdings, and they do in this case. So we get here twice, each holding twice. That's because uh, it's Journal of Bone and Joint Surgery A and B. They have overlaps with ISN numbers. Dr. Doc does a very good job in mapping different ISN numbers. This is something perhaps you also had. You, you have one ISN number and you don't find uh, the journal because actually in all the catalogs is, it is um, entered with another ISN number. Dr. Doc knows all these relationships around ISN numbers and will show you all. So that's because we have A and B here. So now I know um, Winter tour very 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 good. I could also ask them to make me a copy, print holdings, which is perfectly in in the uh, copyright. Of course, you can have here the information. So you just get um, what you are looking for, what they have, and the address to contact them. So. Um, so many libraries in Switzerland, <coughs> actually small libraries like hospital libraries, like nursing schools, they did import their print holdings into Dr. Talk. It's uh, something you will find uh, nowhere except here. Um, of course, very common, at least in our German part, uh, very often you have to order an article at Subito, the German ordering system 
University of uh, um, Zappi Köln, the biggest um, um, library at, in, in, in the health sector, sector. So you just click here. If you didn't find it in Switzerland, again, it will open. Yeah, it's, it, it blocks the pop-up. Normally, it would pop up the window to Subito. Never mind, we click once more here. So I don't have my Subito um, login. Um, credentials here, but if you would log in, again, everything will be pre-filled. It's the pre-order form of Subito. And more crazy for if anybody would come from Germany, <laughs> there is the GBV ordering system. If you are, would be a German uh, library, um, you would not only have here a button for Subito. If you are part of the GBV, you would have a second uh, button here and you could order directly in the GBV. We made an interface really interacting with them. It was a, uh, a huge work to do, but made them very happy in Germany. <laughs> okay. So let's see if I missed something that's autocomplete. We have seen this is uh, availability. You can search all holdings of all major suppliers, as we have seen. It will also combine, show you again, if you have um, an online holding or a print holding, which you have stored in Dr. Talk. This comes in very handy, too, because st we still have around uh, 1,200 online uh, licenses. So I don't know uh, at every time if we have a license or not. It will show you again. Good idea to get a member of the EZB. These are these pre-order forms. You have seen them also to Subito, University Bern, also to the Schiff in Lausanne, EPFL. We have also a pre-order form to the British Library. We have this ELL interface for German libraries. Yeah. Good. Then, major part. You have to store the information. You have to uh, see. You want to see um, the state of an order. You want to update an order. You want to search for your orders. Um, you want to track states. You want to sort and to print. Everything can be done within Doctor Doc. Just do that now. Save this order. So here, I can say test. Then I have got my customers. I take now my address. They get, um, when ordering, you can define if a customer will be saved automatically. So you don't have to create all these customers. Um, yeah, you can, you can add notes. So I do that so that my, my colleagues will know um, this is a fake order. You could um, add a state here. So now it, I did order it, assuming it, and I do save it. So going back here, I've got this list. This now is an article, just the one we created right now. Here we have other media types. You have books. It could be a book part. Doc Doc is not really apt for book or book parts. It is just an added feature. Talk to talk is really about journal articles, but still you can manage your uh, interlibrary loans of books and book parts. <coughs> um, here you can reorder. If I press here, we go back to the availability page. If I press here, you can edit it. Here uh, you can delete it. Um, this one is interesting. Um, you can send an ELL request, an ELL form to any library you wish. So maybe you have your own suppliers, which you can define. And after once, uh, once you have done that, you can send this either by email, directly by email over the system, or just export it as a PDF, which I will do now. Uh, Mac, Mac, Mac. I don't like Mac, so it actually should open the PDF, which normally it does. Probably it's here. Yeah, thank you very much. So this is now a traditional uh, ELL form or ELL form. This was actually a request which came from Germany. They work a lot with these forms. They send each other these forms. 
So we did implement it. There are several designs um, which you can use if you are interested. We couldn't de develop uh, another one for you and uh, send it to your supplier, which probably will be a small supplier, another hospital library. What do I know? Okay. Um, good. So, of course, you can also manage your, not only your orders, um, as you, I didn't show that, you can sort and print uh, your orders, you can, you can export lists of your orders, you can search for in, in within a, a certain range, and then again sort and, and export how it should be. And you can also manage your patterns, you can change patterns, you can add patterns by hand, um, yeah, whatever it, it's need, it, it, it is needed. This, the ELL form, form we have just seen, for any supplier, you can de define these suppliers. I have to watch that you don't. You can, uh, um, you can define these suppliers, send it by email, export it as PDFs, and yeah, you, you can customize <coughs> these suppliers. <coughs> very, very handy. One, one, one question. Uh, when you place uh, an ELL on an article, you get an article and you don't have to give it back, Place an ALL on the book, you must send it back. Yeah, right. After. Yeah. Is, is uh, this process also managed by Dr. Um, so it is really about journal articles which you don't have to give back. Uh, in, in books, um, we use the hack that we uh, say it is ordered, state ordered. Um, when it comes to our library and we, we send the book to, to, the, to the customer, we, we, we change the state to delivered. And in Dr. Doc, and when the book comes back to, to, to us, um, we then send it to finished, done, the state done. So this is, this, is not, um, this is not about books. There is no, also no, how do you call that? Um, um, if, uh, if um, <coughs> there is no, uh, like in a notepad where you, where you can send out, um, was heißt Monique? Yeah, you don't, you, you don't have a system where you can manage recalls uh, and stuff like that. It's really about journal articles. This is an added feature for books. It comes from my experience. In our hospitals, books are really vanishing. We don't even have, for the medicines, for the, for the doctors, we don't even have any books anymore. E-books, okay, but not books. It's gone. Maybe different at your places, don't know. So we've got a lot of detailed statistics. This is really something to see. If I press uh, statistics, it takes a moment to load. So you will see all your orders you have done within a year. You can see where you have ordered these. You can even track costs of the articles. And very, very interesting, of course, you can um, see which people will order at your place, which are the, the groups of people, of departments, etc. which order. Schülerin. Yeah, Schüler and Schülerin. And this one is very interesting <laughs> because you can see which journals are on the top of the list. So maybe this would influence you uh, by licensing next year a journal or not. And not surprisingly, <laughs> there will be very few cases where you have to, to really consider a, a license. So we have this nursing school. They do order all these nursing journals, so they are very on top. They are not online or partially online. We have licensed this one online. Um, yeah. And the price number is the total uh, amount? Yeah. Here, if we don't have any amount because we do have uh, this journal in print, so we do supply this in print. Here, mostly we do have all the prints too. We supply them by the prints we have. If we do have to, to order a copy of, um, of an, an article which you do not have in print, then it will show up in the case of Heilberuf. The total cost of this uh, journal, right? The total cost of... Uh, I have a request for this.
right. Yeah. So many, many journals like the Deutsches, Deutsches <coughs> Ersteblatt, which is free in the internet, will not have any costs. So you would have duplicates to look at the, the ones which are used very often, also how, how many users. Maybe you have a, a very high usage here, but it's just one customer. <laughs> so I don't know if you would license a journal for just one customer. So you have to check this tool, and then you also have to check what you pay on ELL, and then you have to consider maybe next year I'll take a license online. Yeah. Uh, it's about the service, so if somebody asks for an article which is free on the web, or yeah. you do the work, you, yeah. you take, you download the article yeah. and yeah. send them. Yeah. In our case, the, the URL or something. no, we do download it for, for our internal customers and send them. We have a lot of doctors that don't have any time. <laughs> yeah. No, this is the core, core um, service we supply here. By yeah. Okay. Um, you also can import and export your own print holdings. You could also import and export your online holdings, but uh, it is previewed um, actually for more for print holdings. For online holdings, I recommend again the AZP, which has a nice RP. So if you do that, you can take a look short look. <laughs> um, I have to go up here and go to holdings. <coughs> so basically it's just an XLS file which you can create and import. I'll show you mine here. I open it. I hope it will open. Mac, Mac, Mac. No, it will not open. Yeah. Anyway, it will be an Excel file and you will have to um, enter title like ESSN when you start with the print holding, when you end with the print holding. And actually you can do this on issue level. Nothing, something nobody else does. If you want, you can do it on issue level and the indication of the availability will be on issue level within here. It's crazy. It works. No system has this. This one has it. Um, yeah, um, so this is um, import and export of these holdings. Then if you do that, we have also an RPE which you then can use for an, another application, which we do in the next talk. We will talk about bibnet.org and bibnet.org will use exactly this RPE. I can show you how this looks. Um, I log out. It's a little bit hidden. It's down here. So it's just um, an RPE, which you can send requests to. Here we have got a style sheet, so it looks a little bit nicer. So I can enter here one of these nursing journals. I know they are in here. Like a Pflegezeitschrift. Submit it, and then I'll get an answer. And I see where this um, Pflegezeitschrift um, is available. Actually what this is all about is not this what you see here, but what you see down here. So it's an, it's an XML file, st uh, structured XML file, which then can be machine interpret interpret interpreted, in, also used by machine and used for other applications. But you can use it also as a human and see all this information here. Um, here you will get the order information. In some cases, like here, they have linked their own <coughs> ordering form. So if you click at the third one here, you will get redirected to their home page and can order the article here. In most cases, this will not be the case. Like here, you will just get the gener generic um, information how about how to contact them, what their holdings is, etc. Um, you can also see a list of all their holdings, simple list just from <coughs> this library here, goes down a long, long way down. Um, you will have here 
more information, so they say um, it's available, but only within country Switzerland. We don't deliver anywhere else. Um, for example, the holding is incomplete. You have all this uh, information also in this RPE. So Dr. Doc is not only open source, but provides also a possibility to be used in other applications. And even more crazy, actually, you could say, tomorrow I want my own installation of Dr. Doc. I don't want to use drdoc.com, the hosted version. I want my own, my own installation. And then you can co configure these different installations to talk with each other over this RPE. And uh, we could have four or five installations and we always would know the print holdings of each other. This could be used very easily throughout the country here. Yeah, that's about that. I have to check. Yeah. So I'm finished. This is the information about me. My name, if you need to contact me, I give you not my uh, Soloton Spital Rage email address, but this one here. If you want to check me out, I've got a homepage. I'm actually out from the mu uh, music industry, but um, I've got an IT section where I label all my works I've done. This is my current position. I'm also at the advisory board of the EZB at the University of Regensburg. So if you have any questions about the EZB, feel free to ask me. Um, I'm also on the Springer Library Advisory Board since this year in the corporate section. And I'm a founder of Swiss Consortium, which has nothing to do with the consortia of the university, but is rather a, an, an initiative of uh, Solothurn Spital AG for other hospitals. So feel free to contact me with any questions. Thank you very much.